Welcome everybody to Washboard Lessons 101. This video didn't have an intro, so that's what this is. It's jam-packed with information, so I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you later. All right, so now we're ready to talk about the board a little bit. So this is the kind of washboard I use. Um, it's the kind with these kinds of ridges. So you can see they're pointed and um, they're different than, than this kind of ridge, which is more circular, like it has a, it looks pointy still, but um, it has the ridges and it's thicker. Can you see the difference? I prefer this kind of washboard here for the style that I play. You could use this style if you want. It's just up to you. I just really like the glide that this gives me. And this style often has these huge things up here, which I know I would jam my finger on because sometimes I'll get, um, I'll just misjudge the board or take my hand up too high and I'll come down and I'll hit this ledge. And I know that that would happen even more with this because the ledge sticks out. I know it's going to keep my hand from going down smoothly onto the board where this ledge doesn't stick out and my hand usually goes down smoothly right onto the board. But again, it's up to you and the style you like and what you like to play on. The best thing that I can say is to play around on the board. Depending on where you strike the board and how you strike it, it will have a different pitch and a different sound and all of these things are like having a different drum that you can add to your kit and so like let's see if I can fix this here if I drag up the middle it's gonna sound different than if I do it over here like this is brighter than over here in this corner that sounds different So you can hear how one is goes up in pitch, whoop, and the other one goes down, whoop. And um, it happens. It's and you also get a different effect whether you strike the middle of the board or the sides. And uh, so just play around with that. And the other thing that I would recommend is um, to think about when you're sliding your hand across the board to think about this, even though it's a solid structure, think about it as being a a pressable structure and what you're really doing is you're in when you're when you think like this is you're varying the pressure of your hands on the board and so um, this will help you be able to like speak let's just be quotations with the sound of, of your washboard uh, you know to make it someone told me once that when I played I make it sing I make the washboard sound like it's singing or a part you know, uh, because I really play with the different pitches and I play like with even within one stroke or within a grind stroke, which we'll, I will all have a different video for, is I play with how much I press. I'm pressing against the board and, it'll, and it'll, I'll be like, I'll go in and out and in and out all within one stroke to get more of more depth to my sound. I hope that makes sense. Um, that might be a little advanced, but just keep it in mind uh, to play with that. Uh, because that does matter and it does affect um, the parts that you that you play and the parts that you make. Uh, practice to different music other than washboard music. Practice to music that is even unlike the band that you're playing with. Um, and choose music that you like, that makes that makes you feel like you're in that gets you in a groove, you know, that you like to jam to. And try to find ways to play the washboard along with it. And what that's gonna do is it will help you create your own sound um, in your own kind of jive as a washboard rhythm player. So that you just don't so you don't sound like like the <laughs> you know if you want to create your own kind of sound that's really helped me be able to blossom on the washboard was I did I I practiced a lot when I wasn't writing for the music for the band I was with I practiced a lot to like uh, hip-hop and uh, some R&B and then like 
this Ukrainian music that I was into at the time. And <laughs> but it really helped me find different ways to get sounds out of the board that I ended up using when I wrote for my washboard band that helped just bring more flavor and it helped create the sound that will just make you stand out and that would be more enjoyable to listen to. Um, because you're going to be going, it's going to be playing off your own leanings, what your body, the kind of rhythm your body already knows how to make. Um, because I do not have a traditional washboard sound. I, it's harder for me to play a traditional washboard beat because uh, it's very bouncy and um, almost has like a, almost like a country bounce to it. And that's not my forte. I have to work really hard to, to get there. My forte is, is the opposite. And so um, one time someone told me that I, I play washboard uh, as if I were in Drum Corps International, DCI. If you are in you were ever in marching band in the U.S., you might know what DCI is. And that was so accurate. I didn't even realize that. But I grew up around a lot of that. And so... Um, Anyway, don't be afraid to let your own background bleed into your interpretation of the instrument, is what I'm trying to say. And uh, my last thing is that when you, when you first start uh, playing the washboard, you may find that um, you very much delegate different parts of the strokes to different hands. And that's totally fine. Um, and if you get thrown off, you just kind of wait a beat and hop back in so that you, because you can only play this part of the stroke on your left hand and this part of the stroke on your right hand kind of thing. And uh, for like the first, like for my first tour, that's, that's all I could do. And then by the second and third tour, I began to um, practice and become more comfortable with the strokes, but practice using both all, both hands, like flipping the, the stroke so that I could play it inversely on either hand. That way, um, and doing this made me so much more um, uh, diverse as a player. <laughs> uh, and it made me so, so much better at improv and going with the flow because I could always just go right into any beat or any stroke that I wanted to uh, because no matter what hand I was on because I was so much more versatile. I could do any stroke on either side of the board with either hand. But that's just as you get going, like I said, for like the first year even, if you can't do that, don't worry about it. Just let it come naturally until, you know, doing the strokes feels really good. Um, and then to attach your washboard to yourself, I've lost my, I need to make another one. I ha I just took, I had little screws like you would screw into the wall that had a hook with a, like a screw at the end and I just twisted them into the side of my washboard, one there and one there, and I found that that worked the best. It's like the same kind of things you would use to hold like a pot from the ceiling or something. I just twisted them into the side and then uh, took like, mine was an old like like bag um an old like a big purse or something it had like a clip satchel or you can use something i'm going to try to use this this uh this is a guitar strap and just make it really short and um and then just use the ends to clip onto either side of the washboard and i just hung it around my neck um so because i've lost my straps it's been a while i'm gonna have to make another one uh for the next video and then maybe i can show you guys what I've done. But some people like to secure it around their waist as well. I can see why you would do that. I've never tried that. Um, yeah, it's just all up to you. That's around and find out what works for you. As far as uh, miking, that's the last thing that I want to talk about on this intro video. Come on, lady. So this is what I used to mic the first, my first tour, we used two mics, which was a nightmare. One miking my voice and one miking the washboard. And trying to keep in front of both of those mics while I'm playing rhythm was terrible. Eventually, I just got this mic, like a $60 mic. I'm not well-versed on this kind of stuff. So I forget even what, this is a Cobalt CO4, which I did like minimal reading and... Um, I guess it can, anyway, this is the one I chose. <laughs> and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna even pretend to be a, like someone to, to go to for that kind of information. And so um, I got this little guy, uh, which is a mic holder 
that you can screw and attach onto your vocal mic. So this, this would attach onto the pole somehow. <laughs> it would attach onto the pole of your vocal mic and then this would stick out however way it sticks out. And so I could sing and then this would be down there miking my my board. And I would usually have it, I found it worked better when it faced down a little bit more. Um, and it was kind of at about like just under the halfway point, like about right there. It's so kind of facing towards the bottom of the board, just under the halfway point. That's kind of where I found it was best um, according to where I did most of my stroke work. And then you might adjust that depending on where you play on, you find yourself playing mostly on the board. I ended up having to thrash on the washboard because I played with a full band, I guess. That might, the definition of that might be different for different people, but, um, and they were all plugged in. They all had their own uh, XRL cables into their own, sometimes their own speaker and then their own monitor. It was a huge learning curve. No one had ever played with a washboard on stage. And um, anyway, I ended up getting a tiny little speaker. Um, well, someone let me borrow it. And, and then I ended up propping it up on just like a stand so that it was more at my head level and sitting it behind me. And then I would uh, plug in, I would have a microphone that plugged into that. It would run to the house or, or whatever and they would, cause they would cut me out of the monitors immediately uh, because of the strike of the metal on metal was just not good for them. And, um, and so as soon as they had any feedback, which was always, they would just cut me out of my, of the monitor. <laughs> So I could barely, it was a huge struggle. It was a huge, huge struggle because as a rhythm player, I couldn't really hear myself um, over everyone else's amplified sound, like a huge bass and or small bass or whatever, and then a, a guitar and sometimes like keys, and they're all plugged in and being amplified. And, and I was like, why can't you hear yourself? <laughs> it seems so obvious now looking back. But anyway, I hope you guys got a lot. Of information from this. Um, I hope this was well worth it for you and just you know good luck and have have a lot of fun. Okay? <laughs> Alright guys, peace out.